Assalamualaikum. So this is the second video for chapter one. Okay. So we continue with the communication process. Okay. I'm sure that you already learned this communication process in MGT one six two. Uh, hopefully you still able to remember to understand from the last semester. Okay. So in the communication process, okay, we're gonna look uh the components in the communication process. How the communication process happen? Okay. So here we have a few components in the communication process. Okay. So first we start with the sender. Okay. So sender is the person who initiates the communication process. The person who uh, send the message. Okay. So this sender has an idea. Okay. The source or that initiates the communication. Okay. Due to the need, desire to communicate or purpose, this sender has the purpose that he want to send the message to share the message, whether it's a formal or informal. Okay. Then after that, the sender he will encode. Okay. The sender transforms the idea into a message, okay? a process that we call as encoding, okay? which depends on the messages from forms such as words, okay? or you want to have this special expression or some gesture in order to convey or to send the message. Okay? Uh, depends on the length of the message and how he organized the message okay? and the tone or the style that he used. Okay? So this is encoding. Okay? Channel, okay, channel uh, the sender has to transmit the message through a communication channel, meaning that the sender has to choose whether you want to use verbal or non-verbal, spoken or written, a medium, okay, using the letter or memo, report, telephone, email, phone call, face-to-face -face and all that, okay. So, of course, in choosing the, the channel, okay, it depends on the message. Okay, uh, the location of the receiver, the speed, uh, the um, privacy, okay, or the formality, the time, and so on. Okay, so the sender have to choose the appropriate, the most suitable channel to reach to the receiver. Okay, so after that, uh, the receiver, okay, will get the message, and the receiver need to interpret the message when you get the message and then you need to interpret uh, what is the meaning of the message okay so this process of interpretation we call it as decoding okay if the receiver interprets correctly the person will react in the desired way so when the receiver able to digest to interpret correctly do accordingly to uh, send us uh, intentions so this is the effective communication okay Okay, so the receiver will react and send back the feedback to the sender. Okay, so this uh, uh, feedback, okay, uh, will um, ascertain or make sure that the receiver truly understand the message sent by the uh, sender. Okay, so throughout uh, the communication process uh, at any stages, noise will happen. Okay, noise is the uh, distractions to the communication process. Okay, so it can happen at the sender stage or at the receiver or during the transmitting the information okay, through the channel and so on. Okay, so there are a few types of communication. We have intrapersonal communication, communicating within uh with ourselves. Okay, intra mean that inside ourselves mean that when we do the intrapersonal communication mean that we're talking to ourselves. Okay. Uh, interpersonal communication means that we interact with other people. So the communication between uh two people, okay, the sender and receiver, you and the other one, okay. Uh, communication also can happen in small group communication, okay, small group, okay, between uh, one group, okay, with another, uh, between one group, a small group, and everyone communicate inside the group, okay. It can 
also we can also have the public communication okay by one or more people okay to a large group of people okay so from one people or a few people to the large audience okay and the last one is uh, mass communication mass is bigger okay so transmitted to large widespread audiences via technology which um the best way to transmit uh, this information is using the technology because you need to reach to a mass uh, mass society or mass communication okay uh, the basic forms of communication we have verbal non-verbal formal and informal uh, whether it's internal or external the organization Okay, let's see the uh, verbal and non-verbal. Verbal is written and oral communication, okay, because we're using the verb, okay. Usage of words arranged in some meaningful patterns, okay. So, verbal meaning that uh, we're using the verb, whether uh, orally, okay, or written, okay. Oral communication provides a speedier exchange with uh, immediate feedback, okay, giving a feeling of importance. If you need to receive the feedback, uh, in a split second, okay, so of course you need to do the oral communication much, much faster compared to the written communication. But written communication is best if you need to record it, okay. Nonverbal, okay, mean that most basic form of communication where uh, nonverbal mean that we didn't use the, without speaking, okay, without using the verb. Okay, interpersonal process of sending and receiving message, but without using written or spoken language. Okay, how? Okay, okay. We see the nonverbal communication. Whether we can use the facial expressions, okay, uh, to show to the other people that you are angry. It's not not necessarily that you have to yell or say that I'm angry with you, but you can use your facial expression. Okay. Uh, you can use your eye behavior. Okay, you maybe you stare at the person to show that you are not satisfied with the person. Okay, by gestures or postures. Okay, uh, gestures or postures also the way you uh, walk, the way you sit will send a message to other people. Okay, the vocal characteristic that you use, whether you use a high pitch, okay, uh, to show that you are not satisfied, you are a bit angry okay maybe you want to use your do high use higher pitch okay to your vocal okay from your personal appearance sometimes from from our uh, appearance people can interpret us and it can give message to the other people okay uh, touching behavior the way you touch uh, you hold something okay you touch people okay the use of time and space okay um time in that let's say that you are very interested with the people to to the occasion so maybe you want to uh, come a little bit early okay if you are not attending or you come late you will show or send a message that you are not interested okay the space between you and the other people or the space how you arrange when you accept the receiver is also will give a message to the other people Okay, so we have to be always be careful uh, using the non-verbal communication because sometimes uh, people might misinterpret us. Okay. Okay, what about formal and informal? What it means by formal and informal? Okay, formal okay, align with the official structure of an organization because we want to see inside the organization. Okay, so defined by the official chain of command. Okay, so inside the organization, we have the hierarchy, the organizational structure. Okay, so here, uh, when we say a formal, mean that we follow the chain of command, the organizational uh, structure inside the organization. So it covers wide distances as organization develop and info drivers over different paths. So maybe if you want to send a message to the higher rank okay, people, so it will go through from uh, one rank to the other. So it will take a lot of time to reach to the uh, to that person. Okay. For informal, we also call it as grapevine. Okay. No set hierarchy path and no rigid structures. So for the informal, we don't have to follow the uh, hierarchy of uh, chain chain of command okay we don't have to follow the hierarchy inside the organization okay we can communicate with uh, whoever inside the organization regardless 
our uh, differences in the position okay it will contain needs of business okay uh, and personal messages of facts opinions and assumptions mean that it's not necessarily that we will talk about the uh, speak about the task work we also might want to exchange information about our uh, interests what happened to us our hobbies and just get social with the our colleagues okay Okay, so this is for the uh, types of grapevine or the informal. Okay, so we have single strand chains. Okay, uh, this chain consists of one on one interactions, meaning that the information will uh, pass from one person to the other person. Okay, let's say here we have the straight line here L, M, N, and O. Okay, so consider this as the person. Okay, so L will pass the information to M, M will pass it to N, N will pass it to O, and maybe it will continue to the other people. Okay, so it is the least accurate of the four chains. Uh, we have four types of grapevine. Okay, so this is the least accurate. Okay, because um, it will the information will go through from one people to the other people so it will take longer when you pass the information from one to the other one and then the other one pass it on to the other one person and so on so um sometimes the message will get distorted added deleted and so on okay and that's why we have is gossip chain okay so if you see here the diagram here okay from l to all people okay so L will inform all people, will tell Q, P, O, N, R, and so on. Okay? This chain is characterized by a group of people gathering to discuss matters of mutual interest. Okay? Here, you can see that one person seeks out okay, and tells everyone the news uh, that he get. Okay? So, this one person get the information and he will... Uh, distribute it to everyone in the uh, organization okay it's used to relay interesting bits of news that may not be job oriented so usually the gossip must be something interesting for people to hear to want to hear so for you to able to gather everyone to hear your story the third one we have the probability chain okay so message is passed on randomly without direction or method okay you just pass the information as random okay the choice of recipient depends on the sender's will situations or context so the sender will pass but uh he will um pass it randomly but depends on the content of the message okay the sender's will who he want to pass it okay sender is indifferent to or not interested in the receiver he chooses so might be the sender is not um don't have any preference okay so he just pass on but uh, depends on the situation or the context okay some people might not interested with the information so the sender only will send or choose those people who are interested okay. and the last one we have cluster chain okay this is the most popular grapevine pattern okay information is passed on on a selective basis to a few members only if you see here uh, for cluster chain the information will uh, move okay from one one small group to the other group okay you see l Okay, L will pass the information to M, N, and Q. Okay, and then N will share the information to his friends, to his group, which is uh, O and P. Okay, the first sender informs a few chosen individuals, okay, who again pass on the information to individuals. Okay, so the choice of recipients depends on the content, okay, and also the intent of the messages, okay, maybe the relationship with the members. Okay, so there we have the four types of grapevine. Okay.
The next one is the uh, internal and external. What it means by internal communication and external communication. How we differentiate the internal and external. Okay. So internal exchange of information and ideas within the organization. Internal meaning that inside the organization. So it can be formal and also informal. Okay. So the information will flows upward, downward or horizontal. Okay. Well, for the external, okay, exchange of information and ideas with external parties or outsiders, meaning that uh, the communication process happened outside the organization. Okay. So it can be with the customers, the suppliers, uh, friends, competitors, government officials, investors, community, and so on. Okay. So usually it can be formal, for example, um, by marketing and PR okay, department or uh, informal, such as you having a casual meetings or discussions or conversations with people outside your organization. Okay. So let's see uh, internal. Okay, we have we can have internal and external, whether it's for formal and informal. Okay, so for internal and formal, it is a planned communication, but it happened inside the organization. For external. Formal it is a planned communication with outsiders, okay? just people outside the organization. Okay? For the internal, okay, inside the organization, but it is informal, so it is a casual communication among the employees inside the organization. For the external and informal, it is a casual communication with the outsiders. Okay? Uh, what is the flow? Okay, uh, just now I mentioned that inside the organization or internal communication, we have the um, the flow of the communication, whether it be downward, downward, upward, or horizontal. Okay, so for the downward, okay, communication that flows from executives to employees, from the people at the higher rank to the lower people, uh, lower level employees. Okay. Uh, the communication is going down. Okay? That's why we call it as downward. Okay? It conveys executive decisions and orders to the people, um, to his uh, subordinates. Okay? Provide information that helps employees to do their job. Sometimes the uh, higher, higher position people will give the information on how to do the tasks, instructions, and so on to the um, lower level employees. Okay? For the upward communication, mean that the information uh, goes up from the people at the lower level of the hierarchy. Okay, set it up the information to the people at the higher level. Okay, so the communication that flows employees to executive from um, below to upper. Help executives to monitor employees' performance and ideas. So sometimes the lower level employees might have the ideas or have to send the report to the uh, executive okay so that's why the information going up okay provide insight to problems okay uh, opportunities trends grievance and performance okay uh, the information allows executives to solve problems and make intelligent decisions okay so the next one we have horizontal okay communication that flows between departments, horizontal meaning that the communication that happen from uh, among people with the same level, okay. So uh, with executive, um, marketing executive, for example, marketing executive with the um, uh, finance executive, okay, or marketing department, a uh, marketing manager with the admin manager, okay. So the information sharing, solving complex problems, and coordinating tasks. And of course, we have the grapevine, okay, the informal communication, which is the uh, single strand, gossip, probability, and also cluster. The next one, okay, what are the barriers? Of course, um, <coughs> when we try to having a, a good communication or the effective communication, sometimes the communication might be not effective because of the certain problems or obstacles or barriers that we face. So the common barriers are perceptual differences okay differences in perception okay the way people think may not be the same or 
the image might be not identical okay or maybe the difference in language okay differences in culture so that's why when we talk uh, when we talking to the other people when we send the message so we have to make sure that we use the same language okay we use the we have to make sure that the person don't have any uh, negative aspect or any other perceptions okay uh, environment, the restricted environment also might cause problem, okay, or in fact, ineffective communication, okay, uh, close office or climate, okay, lack of effective means of sharing ideas, so we don't have the uh, flow to send the message, okay. Distractions, okay. Uh, it can be emotional distractions, okay. Emotions, emotional stress that we are having between the uh, sender and also the receiver, okay. Or the message is overload, too much information which the um, receiver cannot uh, process, okay. Or the poor listening by receiver, receiver uh, is not listening but only hearing mean that you listen you hear from one ear to the other ear ear so it didn't go to your uh, mind okay physical distractions such as back connections or noise sometimes noise or you don't have a strategic location which will uh, distract you from having the communication process and the last one is deceptive tactics. Okay, tactics to mislead message. Sometimes uh, the sender might not use the simplest way to send a message or use a difficult uh, braces or jargon to send a message which will uh, make the receiver unable or misinterpret um, the message. So how to overcome this barrier? We don't want to waste our time uh, speaking, talking to this person, but that person didn't comprehend, didn't understand, didn't get our message. It will waste of time. Okay. So how to overcome this barrier so that we can have a effective communication? First one is to take communication courses to improve the communication skills. Uh, we have to uh, develop our communication skills. Communication is very important. We in our daily life, of course, we need to communicate. Okay, even though you don't want to speak up, you don't want to use uh, verbal. Okay, uh, but still, non-verbal is also a communication, whether you realize it or not. People will interpret you. Okay. So the next one is learn about your audience or your receiver. You must understand your audience or your receiver. You know your audience. Okay, learn about your receiver's bias, uh, the age, okay, uh, his education, the social status, style, the point of view, that person. Okay, so that uh, whenever you communicate with that person, so he will truly understand your message. Okay, try to adopt. An audience-centered approach. Okay, audience-centered approach meaning that you understand your audience. Okay, focus and care about your audience. Okay, you need to focus to your audience. You need to always uh, asking feedback from your audience whether you are your audience able to understand your message. Okay, always make your message meaningful to your audience. Make sure all the information content is something that the audience can get benefit from you. Okay. Learn all you can about your audience. So you must know about your audience. Who is your audience? What they want to know? Their age, okay, and their education, so that you can adjust your uh, message communication skills for their uh, purposes. Okay. Use common sense and imagination to project yourself into the audience position. So you try to imagine you as the audience. So if you use this sentence, if you convey this, if you send this message. Uh, to them will they be able to understand or to get the message okay because our purpose is to have the effective communication so that whatever uh, information that we deliver get understand okay uh, we can also encourage an open communication climate okay less communication chain okay modify the number of organizational level make it more or uh, effective or easier for the people to reach to you okay 
always ask for the feedback okay facilitate feedback okay you can use survey you can use memo if you're unable to have direct communication with your audience okay or um face to face okay you can always use memo or survey okay if you're able to uh, face to face you should ask okay if you use verbal you should continuously ask for the feedback okay and of course, you have to commit to ethical communication. Okay, you have to always give the accurate info. Okay, uh, do not plagiarize, do not misquote, do not misrepresent uh, numbers, and so on. So you have to be ethical in delivering your communication. Okay, do not spread rumors. Okay. Um, so you need also to adjust get okay, tools of communication according to your audience or your receiver. Uh, maybe uh, if your audience use Facebook, so you might want to use Facebook, okay? Or email. If you think that they are all of your audience have email, familiar with email, then you can use email, okay? Uh, should create lean and efficient messages. Try to limit the numbers of messages to be communicated. Meaning that, not to um, overload. Okay, the information too much information. Okay, develop and con connect ideas to the best way possible. So try to um, organize your messages. Okay, and choose the correct channel and medium is the best okay even though if you have all this uh, organized information um sentences that you uh, use is suitable with your audience but uh, if you choose the wrong channel the message might not get to your audience okay so that's it for chapter one thank you we will, we will continue with chapter two